The Power of Facts in the Creation of Identity, with case studies in The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance and Lone Star. Who we see ourselves as is tied to our memory. I don't think anyone would deny this. We can all identify past moments, people, experiences, events that somehow shaped who we are today. Likewise, we know to some extent what we do now will shape us in the future. Our concept of what we've done and what we've come from defines our conception of self. It could have been some event early in life that inspired us to take a certain route as we grew, or it could be the legacy of friends and family past that inspired us to do what we are today. Regardless, there are countless ways in which one small event can change our lives and possibly the lives of others forever. But this begs the question, when others can't know the facts surrounding someone's life, how can they possibly construct a proper identity? Whether that person is purposefully misrepresenting themselves or the facts are simply misinterpreted, what does this mean about reality when we construct the people around us differently than what the objective facts would say? Maybe things are pretty spot on. Maybe things are um, a little different. I want to look at two different examples as represented by two different movies. The first phenomena is when the legends of our life become the facts of our identity. For this, we're going to look at The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, a classic John Ford Western starring uh, the guy from It's a Wonderful Life and Rooster Cogburn. In this movie, Jimmy Stewart and John Wayne are both members of a community striving towards the same goal. They do it in very different ways, though. One of them is the rugged, gun-toting, shoot-first, ask-questions-later, charismatic leader of the town. The other is the newcomer, who doesn't fight with a gun, but fights with laws. Both of them go up against the most infamous man in the county, Liberty Valance. This man uses fear, and intimidation to get whatever he, and the ranchers who employ him, want. He is the enemy of our two do-gooders. And yet, somehow, this is the man who ends up shooting Liberty Valance. This guy right here. Now, granted, he did punch John Wayne, which is pretty impressive, but it's still incredible that it's the lawman, and not the gun-toter, who ends up taking out Valance. These three people all have tremendous impacts on one another's lives. This shooting propelled Jimmy Stewart's character into the spotlight, and eventually, he became a state senator. John Wayne's character, on the other hand, descended into drunkenness. What we later find out, though, is that Jimmy Stewart did not shoot Liberty Valance. It was John Wayne's character who did. However, by the time this was revealed to Jimmy Stewart's character, too many things had happened, too many people were counting on him, and too much had been built up around the idea that he was, without a shadow of a doubt, the man who shot Liberty Valance. When he tried to share this story at the end of the movie, he was told something that I think defines the problem we're looking at. When the legend becomes fact, print the legend. What do we do when we build an identity, either our own or someone else's, around legends that aren't facts? They become solidified. And in the process, some objective truth is lost. Let's look at another case. 
let's look at when the legends of another's life become the facts of our identity. For this one, we'll look at the movie Lone Star. Here we have Sam Deeds, the town sheriff, who's investigating a murder. At its most basic, this movie is a film noir whodunit just set in Texas in the 90s instead of Chicago or New York in the 30s. At its most complex, it is a dense character study, taking in a half dozen different storylines with dozens and dozens of characters. At its heart, though, it's the story of three individuals, all of them town sheriffs. Sam Deeds, his father, the legendary Buddy Deeds, and Charlie Wade. Charlie Wade was infamous. He was corrupt, he was violent, and if you did not pay your toll, you ended up in the ground. The young deputy at that time, Buddy Deeds, stood up to him and ran him out of town. This was a time when standing up to Charlie Wade's was almost certainly a death sentence. And yet, the town narrative, at least, says that he was the one to gather the people's courage and force this lowlife out. However, this story may not be true when a body turns up that is almost certainly, after investigation, Charlie Wade's. There's one person who doesn't have a rose-tinted view of who Buddy was. And that's his son, Sam. While everyone else is trying to convince him that they're barking up the wrong tree, but Sam is committed to following up any lead, even if it means incriminating his father. While he's a legend to the rest of the town, he's just a man to Sam. In the end, it turns out that the current mayor and former deputy is the one who shot Charlie while Charlie was about to shoot another man. Both the mayor, Buddy, and the almost victim of Charlie Wade went and buried him in the desert and promised to never speak of it. With this news, Sam simply lets it go. You see, it wasn't so much finding out who killed Charlie Wade, as finding out who really was this buddy. For him, it was just his dad. For everyone else, he was a legend. And the truth was somewhere in between. He didn't have the greatest of relationship with him, and this was his way of finding out who he was, and to an extent who he was. In the very beginning, there's a scene where a man at a restaurant mentions that while Sam Deeds may be okay, he could never live up to his father, and him being sheriff is kind of a joke compared to the old days. He had to live under a legend, and he had to figure out who he was in the process. So what does this all mean? It means that our reality may not be as set as we think it is. All those who thought they knew who really shot Liberty Valance, all those who thought that Buddy selflessly drove Ward out of town, all of these people were partaking in the construction of a certain reality by giving someone a certain identity. And so the way that these things shape our identities, or the identities of those who influence us, has huge impacts for reality itself. For how these influential people are seen can determine, in huge ways, how we live our lives.